All right. Well, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I'll be your host for today. Really excited for today's SciComm story time. If you've been tuning in the last few weeks, every day at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, we connect with amazing science communicators from across North America, and they share stories about their passion for science, what got them into their fields, variety of fields from uh, wildlife experts to uh, marine biologists to space scientists. So it's been just an absolute blast to be hosting uh, these events daily. So we're really excited to get today's event going. Today we're connecting with uh, Maynard Okariki. He is better known as the Hip Hop MD, uses his knowledge of science to help inspire minorities and youth by bridging the gap between music, entertainment, and science, encouraging more diverse involvement in STEM fields. So Maynard, it's so great to have you joining us live today. We're excited to get to know you a little bit better. And of course, we'll fire away with a little Q&A action afterwards. Awesome, awesome. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Um, my name is Maynard Okereke, better known as the Hip Hop MD. As you can see, I am in full Hip Hop MD attire here in the lab. Uh, before I get started on my presentation, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Emily Calandrelli. She goes by at Space Gal on Instagram for reaching out to me to be a part of this platform. This is so cool being able to be part of the different science community here and working with other science communicators and hearing all the different stories that everybody's been sharing over the past couple of weeks. So make sure you guys continue to tune in and hear some amazing stories. I'm gonna go through my presentation about my background, why I'm the hip hop MD and why I'm in a lab coat here and what it is that I do. And um, just to let you guys know, this is probably going to be the most non-traditional science breakdown explanation from a science communicator you'll see here. I know yesterday you guys had Science Bay on here, making the connection between science and beauty. You had Raven, the science maven, touching on music, which is what I do as well, too. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of introspective on what it is that I do and how I use my curiosity to navigate science. So I'm going to start sharing my screen here. I got a little PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to share with you guys. And hopefully this will function well here. Boom. So we are on slideshow here. Perfect. Awesome. So like I said, I am the Hip Hop MD. My platform is called Hip Hop Science. You can find me at the Hip Hop Science Show on all these different social media outlets, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I post a lot of quirky content doing the correlation between music, hip hop, pop culture, comedy, and of course, science. Um, so the focus that I want to go in on my presentation today is a topic of curiosity is nature's PhD. Uh, to let you guys know, I'm not, I do not have a PhD. Um, I do not have a master's. I do not consider myself an expert in any particular subject. But curiosity to me is nature's natural form of education. Um, curiosity to me is highly important because curiosity is how we discover new things. It's how we innovate. It's how we get curious about the world around us. And so I really wanna highlight how I've used curiosity to navigate the world around me and why I believe it's so important for all of us to have curious minds and how curiosity can really help elevate and shape us and really help shape the world around us. So a few of the different things that I'm gonna go into on my presentation will be the topic of embrace yourself. We all come from different backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, personal backgrounds, cultural backgrounds. The important thing, no matter where you come from, is to have a good understanding of yourself and embrace who you are, be comfortable in your own skin. And a lot of times it's really difficult with a lot of different pressures around us in the world. And so I wanna kind of talk about how I, over the years, I've learned to embrace myself and embrace who I am and use that in my pursuit of knowledge and in my pursuit of science. I'll also go over the topic of the scientific power of music, which to me is really, really cool because like I said, I made the correlation between hip hop, music, pop culture, entertainment, and science. But the science and music is literally all around us and everything that I, we do. And I really think it's important for us to understand and know how music plays a role in the life and the world around us. And the last topic, it's gonna be Wu-Tang raised me. Now, it's not in the literal sense. I wasn't raised by the nine members of Wu-Tang, but I wanna kind of highlight how my mind works when I listen to music and how my introduction to music and artists and artists like, such as uh, Wu-Tang really helped shape in my understanding of music and science. So uh, embrace yourself. Like I said earlier, it's really difficult. A lot of us come from different backgrounds and a lot of times we feel boxed in, like maybe we could only be one thing, uh, but we all come from different backgrounds and it's important for us to embrace yourselves, understand yourselves, understand the path you're going and be comfortable with your passions, be comfortable with what you love. 
for me personally, I was a hip hop artist before I was ever a scientist. Uh, music had always been my passion, it been something I always loved. It was my creative outlet. I worked with a number of hip hop artists, produced for artists, performed on stages all across uh, the United States. And music was my form of creativity, it was my form of expression, way to uh, express myself. And I was doing that from an early age, ever since middle school. But along with being a hip hop artist, I'm also a civil engineer. I went to school at the University of Washington in Seattle. Shout out to all my Huskies out there, anybody from the Northwest. Uh, this is a picture of me here at my first job after graduating uh, from college. I worked with an engineering firm in Seattle. Now, I originally went into school wanting to be a wildlife biologist. I had a love for nature and the environment and the world around us and ecosystems. But once I got into school, I started connecting with a lot of my peers that were in the engineering fields and always had a love for Legos and building blocks and architecture and understanding design. And when I started to talk to other people and see people in these fields, it really sparked my curiosity for engineering. And so I went into civil engineering. I worked with an engineering firm, did a lot of uh, high-end infrastructure projects, did uh, data centers for Microsoft. Um, I built the Nintendo headquarters uh, in Redmond. Um, also did the rental car facility that was connected to the airport uh, at SeaTac there in Seattle. And this picture is uh, me on one of the condominium projects that I did. And engineering was awesome. That was also a creative outlet for me. It was a way for me to be able to connect with my science side and be able to make new discoveries and work with other engineers. And I worked professionally as an engineer for a number of years in Seattle before I'm in LA now. Uh, so along with being a hip hop artist and an engineer, I'm also in entertainment. I'm an actor out here in LA as well too. I've been blessed to have an opportunity to be part of a number of short films and feature film projects. And for me, acting was another way for me to be able to express my creative side. And one thing that acting really did for me was really help me be more comfortable in front of camera and build my confidence in front of camera and really be able to hone in to myself. And I say all these different things as far as me being a hip hop artist and engineer as an actor, because all these shaped and molded me into what it is that I am today as the hip hop MD and what I do on my science platform. All these things shape me and help me understand the world around me and really help me develop this platform into what it is right now. So when I say embrace yourself, I want people to understand you can be multiple things. You don't have to feel boxed in or feel like you can only do one thing. And I know a lot of people feel inhibited and might not feel like they can really express themselves creatively. But I've been blessed to have the opportunity to have all these different outlets and have these different unique experiences that have helped shape me to what it is that I do today. So into the scientific power of music. I think this slide is really, really cool because to understand our present and to understand our future, we have to understand the past, where we came from. This is a picture of the Div J Babe flute, which I believe was found in the middle Pleistocene era, it's right around the Ice Age era. And this was the earliest instrument ever made by man over 67,000 years ago. And I think this is so cool because it just really reiterates the power of music fact that our ancient ancestors were using music to communicate and using it as a form of expression. This flute was actually made out of the femur of a cave bear, I believe. And it's been shown in studies that music has a big effect on our social interpersonal relationships and the way we communicate. And I believe that this slide is very important for us to just have an understanding of our historical relevance of music, how it's played a life, uh, played a role in ancient life and where we are today as humans. There's also multiple connections between music and fitness. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge fitness lover. I love working out. And we all listen to music while we're working out. I know for me, if I go to the gym and I forget my headphones, I got to go back to the car, grab my headphones because I cannot work out without them. There's a picture of The Rock, one of my idols, big wrestling fan, shout out to The Rock. Um, but for us, why do, we do, why do we listen to music when we work out? What is it about music that actually inspires us or motivates us? And it may not be working out for some other people. It might be for studying or doing some other tasks. We listen to music because it helps balance us in some way. There's a ton of different connections, a lot of different things happening neurologically, a lot of things happening physiologically within our minds and you know, within our bodies when we listen to music, right? Um, you have uh, cortisol that's being released through your adrenal glands. You have insulin that's balancing your blood sugar levels and different things like that. A lot of different chemical balances are happening while you're working out. 
Um, studies have shown that uh, cyclists even pedal faster while listening to music because now you're enhancing those uh, different connections, right? It's been shown to relieve stress in people. Not only, it's not just the fitness side, but it's also the part of listening to music because it competes with your brain's processing power, which helps you release, uh, relieve uh, yourself of fatigue while you're working out. So if you're feeling tired and you can't get through another rep, music actually helps compete with your brain's processing power to relieve those feelings of fatigue to actually help you work out faster and work out stronger. And to me, that's really, really cool just to see the biological and physiological connections that uh, music has on your body. And you think about nature, the world around us, for plant lovers, tree lovers, and nature lovers, there's a unique connection between music and plants. Have you guys ever heard of, of plants actually listening to music to help them grow, right? It's not necessarily in the literal sense, right? You're not putting some headphones on your, on your uh, chrysanthemums and bumping the latest Drake song or Taylor Swift or something like that. But to understand really how this process works, it's really important to understand how music works and more specifically how sound works, right? So sound is a wave, right? It's a mechanical wave. It propagates through various forms of medium, through air, gas, liquid, solids. And the reason that we're able to hear sound is because it's bouncing off of these different mediums, right? And those vibrations is what our ears pick up. And that's how we hear that sound. And that's how we interpret the data from there. There's also differences in air pressure that's happening. And our ears are uniquely developed and have evolved to be able to sense those different the changes in air pressure. But plants actually use that as a stimulant as well, too. So if we're talking about music and focusing on actual sound, Plants actually use sound to grow. Studies have shown that even in nature, plants can hear other plants in their environment growing, right? And that stimulus actually helps them grow faster because now they have to compete for sunlight. And so they can hear how fast another plant is growing. They can hear shifts in the, in the, uh, in the air. They can hear shifts in the ground from tectonic plates. Uh, it's been shown that plants will actually hear the environment around them, the wind around them, which will help dictate how high they grow because they know if they're in a windy area, they can't grow as high because then they're possibly their trunks or their stems might break off and different things like that. So it's really unique to kind of see the musical connection and the sound connection in just nature and the world around us. And the most unique connection that we'll probably all understand uh, with music is what it does to our brains. Now, far from a neuroscience or anything like that, uh, but I believe it's really important to understand how physically this is uh, having an impact on our brains. So this picture here kind of shows different portions of our brain and their functions. And when you listen to music, you're actually tapping into all these different areas of your brain. You're tapping into areas like the amygdala, which is responsible for our emotional responses, right? We all have emotional connections to music, whether it's you heard a song for the first time when you're young and you, for some reason, you just remember it naturally 10, 15 years later, and you're shouting out the lyrics when you haven't even heard the song in years because you made an emotional connection to it at a certain age. Maybe something happened in your life with a relationship or a breakup or a happy moment in your life. You make these emotional connections to music. And there's actually a difference between your actual uh, perceived emotion and actually felt emotion. That's the reason why we were actually able to listen and find entertainment or find joy from listening to a sad song, but not actually feeling the emotion of sadness. Our brains are actually uniquely wired to be able to understand sound and how that emotion is expressed from it. You have different connections to movement. Uh, all of us, you know, associate dancing with uh, music, right? This is a video of me here on, on TikTok, doing a little dance on TikTok. Obviously, dancing is a huge connection to, to music, right? But what is it about dancing? What is it about movement in our bodies that actually has an impact on our brain? If you look at areas of like our motor cortex, right, which is uh, responsible for the execution of voluntary movements in our bodies, right? those different neurons, those different connections are happening in our brain. Um, those different balances are happening in our brain. And there's actually unique connections to people with Parkinson's disease. They've used dance therapy uh, for people that have Parkinson's disease, uh, which affects their voluntary movements, right? They've used dancing as a form to be able to reconnect those neurons and really be able to have an impact on the brain. And I think that's super unique how dancing has a physiological impact on us. You look at things like uh, our decision-making, complex thinking, right? From our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for uh, complex cognitive behavior. The studies that have been shown that 
listening to ambient music actually helps us be able to interpret data better uh, because music competes, like I said earlier in fitness, competes with our brain's processing power, which actually helps us think more creatively. And I think that's super unique when you really break it down because if you look at our brain like a supercomputer per se, right, with tons of gigabytes of RAM, right? If you're playing maybe one app or have one app running, it's easy to run that one app, but it's not until you actually start doing multiple different tasks that's when you actually realize the true processing power of that computer, that true processing power of that brain. So it's really unique to just kind of look at our brains as a computer and how we're able to maximize the power of our brain by actually doing multiple different tasks. And then uh, areas like playing instruments, right, in our uh, sensory cortex, which is responsible for uh, feedback response to music, right? It's been shown that children that play musical instruments at a young age um, actually are able to um, have different uh, effects on their body, their critical thinking skills, their memory skills. And um, I didn't play instruments growing up, but I always wanted to be, a, I was always a fan of the drums, I always loved the drums. And if you think about instruments, right, you're using so many different parts of your senses. You're using your sense of touch. You're obviously using your sense of sound. You're using your sense of sight. If you're reading lyrics or if you're reading uh, musical notes, all these different things are happening in your brain. And instruments, there's also, like I said, with dance therapy earlier, there's also been a therapy that you use with musical instruments to help people with dyslexia or learning disabilities because it makes that neurological connection in your brain. And it's actually a way for us to be able to hotwire our brain and really uh, use it to the maximum capacity. And I think that's super cool. This uh, picture right here is pretty unique. Um, as you can see here, this is a lady uh, getting brain surgery done while she's playing the violin. And I mean, just think about that for a second. Doctors are going in right here in her brain, her skull open, actually doing brain surgery, removing a tumor in her brain while she's playing the violin. The reason for this is because the violin was really important to her. And so the doctors wanted to make sure that when they're removing that tumor, they didn't hit any parts of the brain that are responsible for hand-eye coordination or any of her motor movements so that she could still be able to play the violin. And so in real time, while they're doing the surgery, she's playing the violin so they could be able to detect and make sure that they're not hitting different parts of the brain that would be crucial for her playing. There've been other studies for people that play the violin and other instruments uh, where they've done electrotherapy in their brain for somebody that had tremors and be able to actually dip, hit different pinpoints of the brain to see which parts of the brain responded to tremors so that they could uh, take away those tremors so that the patient can still play their musical instrument. And just seeing that connection to music and how your brain is wired is just outstanding to me. And I always loved talking about that slide and, and hearing more details about that. Um, this next section here, uh, Wu-Tang Raised Me. <laughs> this is really cool to me because this section really dives into what it is that I do as the hip hop MD, what I do with my uh, platform, Hip Hop Science. Uh, music and most particularly uh, Wu-Tang was my first introduction to science. And if you just think about that, right, you look at a lyric like this from Inspector Deck, this was from the song Triumph. Bomb atomically, Socrates, philosophies, and hypotheses can't define how I be dropping these, right? Now, for me, this is how I use my curiosity to really dive deeper into complex scientific subjects. Some may see this lyric and just think, oh, that's a cool lyric, it sounds dope. But for me, I look at that, and from when I was that age, I looked at that, and I wanted to understand more. My curiosity, those roots, wanted to investigate further. So I look at a line like bomb atomically that starts to uh, wheeling my brain to think about chemistry, atoms, what are atoms made of? Protons, neutrons, electrons, how do they work? How do they affect the world around us? Socrates philosophies, you start looking at critical thinking and how Greek philosophy and how things that ancient Greeks learned really affect the things that we do in science to this day. Uh, you look at areas like hypothesis, like what is a hypothesis? Then you start to break down the scientific method how do we utilize the scientific method in our day-to-day -day tasks? It's pretty crazy when you think about it. The scientific method isn't just for doing science experiments. You use the scientific method we all do in literally everything that we do. When we make a decision to walk outside or make something to eat, right? We all have an hypothesis. We all do experiments. We've all gathered data. And that actually helps shape uh, our processing and shape what we do when we make another reiteration of that task or do another task. And then areas like define, you start thinking about vocabulary, how humans use our vocabulary, how we define words, how we use a definition of words to describe things, how we communicate, how animals communicate with each other and the world around them. 
So these are kind of how my, my mind works and what kind of get the gears spinning and really listening to songs like Wu-Tang was really my first introduction into science because I wanted to understand more of the complexity behind these, uh, behind these lyrics and behind these thoughts. And this is what I still do to this day as the hip hop MD on my hip hop science platform. I go on random crazy science explorations uh, across the country and just investigate different science subjects. And a lot of times they're speared by something that I may listen to. For example, this is a song, uh, Rocket Ship by Future. You might just hear the song title, right? But for me, I wanna dig deeper. I wanna understand more. My curiosity drives me to have a deeper understanding. And so I start to ask questions. How do we get into outer space? What are rockets made out of? How much fuel does it take to actually launch a rocket into outer space? Uh, when we get into outer space, how do we orbit around the world? How does gravity affect us? All these different thoughts start snowballing and lead me into more discoveries. And so this is me here at the Griffith Observatory here in Los Angeles. I had a chance last year to go to their Golden Moon Festival, which celebrated the 50 year anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. And I got to sit down with different scientists. I got to sit down with engineers that actually worked on the Apollo 11 mission. Got to understand the complexities behind designing the rocket that got them into outer space. Different things that went wrong with that experiment. Um, different things that happened with the fuselage. All these different things that kind of that snowballed just from having an interest in learning more about rockets. Even songs like this from Kendrick Lamar, I believe this was on his song DNA. Uh, engine is in like a bird, right? So I start thinking about that and my brain just kind of is wired just to think more complex, dig deeper. I want to have an understanding. Uh, what's the connection between a bird and an engine? What's the loudest bird? How do birds fly? How do birds utilize their feathers to be able to affect their trajectory while they're hunting for prey? And all these different thoughts spearhead and lead me into more discoveries. And so this is me here at the Natural History Museum I have a great relationship with the Natural History Museum. I get to go to all their new exhibits and all their upcoming exhibits and do official vlog recaps um, and navigate through the exhibits and communicate that to people about what's special about the exhibits. This was me at the Nature Fest and I got a chance to meet with ornithologists and hold a lantern falcon, which is the falcon shown here in this picture and understand how that uh, bird uses wind speed and trajectory and its flights and its eyesight to be able to navigate and hone in onto prey. And for me, that was really, really cool because as a biology nerd and a, and a nature nerd and an animal lover, I got a chance to really connect with different areas. And so working with the Natural History Museum has been really cool just being able to communicate with different scientists and explore further just by sparking interest from hearing a song lyric. And then even songs like this from Logic, and I'm full of innovation, right? So I don't just hear the word and just think, oh, innovation, whatever, that's cool, the song's cool, dance to it, whatever. I wanna dive deeper. And so I use songs like that to generate even further questions. What's the coolest innovation happening this year? How do we utilize technology for the better of humanity? And this led me to one of the coolest things that I've had a chance to participate in, uh, which was uh, CES. For those that don't know, CES is the Consumer Electronics Show and it's hosted every year in Las Vegas. This is where all the latest uh, technology, all the latest gadgets, whether it be foldable devices, wearable devices, this is where they're all released. So I had a chance to sit down uh, with engineers at Sony and talk about their new hybrid car. I got to work with an artificial intelligence machine that actually was able to dictate your stress levels while you're playing ping pong and be able to adjust accordingly to be able to match your gameplay. All these different things were spearheaded just by listening to a song and wanting to drive my curiosity further into a different subject. So uh, I believe this is the end of the slide here. This is uh, really just a, a reel of kind of some of the different things that I've done. Uh, but I say all this just to communicate the importance of curiosity and using music or whatever it is that you're passionate about to really have that be the driving force into getting into different subjects and be able to express your love of science or your love of whatever other craft that it is that you're into. For me, music was always that connection and having these different thoughts, having seeing these different lyrics and being involved in music really helped drive my curiosity. And so I really wanna challenge everybody to stay curious Use curiosity as that fuel, use curiosity as that spark. I'm gonna get out of this uh, share here. Um, use curiosity as that spark, use it as that fuel. Don't feel boxed in, don't feel limited, don't feel that you can't express yourself. 
find an outlet that works for you and don't be scared to realize your passions and actually put them into expression and be able to use that to dictate uh, what it is that you do and how you navigate. And this is how I use my platform to really help educate and really be able to stimulate different thoughts in people, be able to make that cross connection between music and science and comedy and all these different elements to be able to share with you guys how I use my brain and how I use my uh, processing power to really think and navigate the world around me. So hopefully this helps inspire somebody in some way, uh, motivate somebody in some way to connect whatever it is that they do and whatever it is that they're passionate about to help share with the world. And so that is really how I use curiosity to navigate the world around me and to be able to uplift people in science uh, using my hip hop science platform. So appreciate you guys and uh, I'll leave the floor open to whatever questions that everybody has. Uh, hopefully I didn't take uh, too much time going through there. <laughs> oh no, Maynard, that, that was awesome. Thanks for a great presentation. And you really expertly highlighted how music uh, can be used as a springboard to be passionate about science and to dive deeper and learn more about the world around us. So I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I have no doubt that any middle schooler who tunes into this uh, will be doing their next science fair project on <laughs> music. I think we got resurgence in yes. plant music growth. Uh, all right, very cool. Yes. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the young family. They're tuning in right now. And that's the first question that's come in is from them. And they're yeah. wondering, what is your favorite part of your job? Your job as a science communicator. Ooh, the favorite parts. Um, ah, that's that's a good question because there's lots of different uh, parts that I love. I say for me, it's really learning new things. I think the best part is actually my sit down interviews that I do with scientists. Um, I've had a chance to interview uh, a climate scientist from NASA. Uh, been able to have a chance to interview one of my good friends that I actually went to college with. She graduated before me, uh, but she teaches now in Long Beach, and she's actually a Nat Geo uh, fellow, uh, fellow, uh, fellowship uh, winner. And uh, being able to sit down with scientists, and also when I go and do all these different discoveries, I always sit down with whoever is an expert in their field in that area, whether it's at a museum or whether it's at uh, some other course or class or whether it's at some other exhibit um, or at an event. I always sit down with experts in those fields and just kind of dive deep into how they got into what it is that they do and what it, how they kind of get those gears spinning and how they navigate the world around them. And for me, I just like to absorb knowledge because you're, you know, you're, you're, you're the microcosm of what it is that you surround yourself around. And I always want to be able to surround myself around people that are much smarter than me, right? I don't have that expertise in climatology. I don't have that expertise in neuroscience, but having a chance to sit down with a neuroscientist or having that chance to sit down like I did last year with a, an ecologist that studies light pollution and how that has an effect on the species and the environment around us. Being able to sit down with them really just helps uh, burst my knowledge base and gives me a better understanding and gives me an insight into how their uh, mind works and how they navigate the world around them. And so I think for me, that's the best part of my job is mm -hmm. having the opportunity to sit down with these scientists, whether it's science communicators or experts or PhD doctors in their fields and really dive deep into their brain and their understanding of how they interpret science. All right. I love that you brought that point up because I think this is Something that plays in a lot of students' minds is that if you have to ask for help, if you have to ask questions, that, that maybe it doesn't show you're smart enough, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Real smart yeah. people go to the experts. They ask for help. They fill in blanks, you know, yeah. that they don't have. So yeah, nobody can know yeah, everything. And I wanted to touch on that too, because um, I believe you had somebody stated it's on your platform. I can't remember who it was before, but um, the fact that we have to be okay with not knowing, right? It's okay to not know, right? But I say it's okay to not know, but it's not okay to be content with not knowing, right? If you don't know, be okay with that, but ask questions, be inquisitive, dig deeper a little bit. If you don't know something, do the research, talk with experts that know. You'll be surprised about how well willing people are to be able to share their knowledge and to be able to help educate you. Absolutely. And you know, good science, good scientists go out in the field with 10 questions and come back with a hundred more. That's yes. just 100% <laughs> true. All right, awesome. So uh, a few questions have come in about social media platforms. So uh, you showed that TikTok video that you were using uh, mm -hmm. and one person said that they think watching fun STEM experiments on TikTok is awesome. And then Emily's tuning in today and she's wondering about uh, what style of STEM video do you find works best on TikTok? Ooh, 
So for me, I'm, I'm still kind of new navigating into the TikTok world. Um, I've really been reposting a lot of content that I posted before on Instagram on my TikTok. So I haven't fully navigated into it. Um, I've been in the works of trying to develop some more TikTok content uh, that is more appropriate for that platform. And so I'm still kind of getting the wheels spinning on exactly how I want to fully navigate that. Really, the only content that I have on TikTok is some of my, I break down fail videos, for example. Uh, so somebody doing something dumb, like hopping on a trash can and then falling. I break down the physics of exactly how that fall happened. And I do that most, uh, mostly on my Instagram with other fail videos. But I've reposted some of those onto TikTok. And those have surprisingly done well. They're not necessarily in your traditional, uh, you know, four by nine by 16 TikTok uh, format or anything like that with quick cuts or whatnot. Uh, but they have proven to be informative and some of them have actually taken off and uh, gained some followers on that platform from people just being interested in the breakdown of science. Uh, but since we are in a stage now where we have more time to create and ideate and brainstorm and come up with different things, I have a list of stuff that I am going to start putting out on TikTok. I've seen some scientists on TikTok do experiments, um, like quick cut experiments. Um, which is really cool. Uh, for me, I want to find more ways that I can utilize my platform, make that musical connection. So something along those lines or actually breaking down physiologically how things happen and making quick cuts and maybe actually doing some actual full form edits uh, to really kind of break down that musical connection to science. Uh, but that's something that is still in the works and hopefully down the line, I'll be able to share with you guys some of the stuff that I do on TikTok. All right, very cool. So Maynard, when were you bit by the science bug? When did you know that science was going to be your career? Wow. Um, I'll say for me, it was early on. It was in elementary school. And for me, I didn't really have any mentors or any scientists in my family. Uh, I didn't have anybody to look up to in the science world. And especially didn't have people that look like me in the sciences. So for me, like I said before, it's, it was all about curiosity. Um, I love to explore. I remember in elementary school, uh, myself and one of my best friends at the time, we used to go out to a pond that was uh, close by in our neighborhood. And there used to be garter snakes and frogs and all sorts of insects in that area. And we just used to go around and just catch them. We used to catch snakes and we used to catch frogs and just put them in containers and just play around with them and for a couple hours and then release them. And that was just so cool to me. And just having that opportunity to just go outside and explore really, really fell in love with uh, things like National Geographic. I remember this past winter, I went back home and I was kind of going through old stuff and I found my whole collection of National Geographic magazines. And I remember I pushed my mom to order these National Geographic magazines because I wanted to understand about these different things that I saw around me. And I remember just, I remember being in like, fourth, fifth grade, just reading National Geographic magazines and just falling in love with nature and falling in love with the world. And for me, that's when I really, really got bit by science and really got bit by uh, biology and understanding environments and ecosystems was from that age. But it was really just for me being curious and exploring the world around me. All right. Awesome. I completely agree 100%. You've got to get outside. You've got to experience yeah. nature. I take my son. He's seven. And we go out, we catch snakes, we catch frogs. Although the last garter snake pooped on him. So I might have a little work <laughs> to kind of turn that around. But right. they say that's good luck, right? <laughs> right, that's right. All right, very cool. Um, okay, so you've had an awesome career path, you know, from uh, thinking about wildlife biology to being a civil engineer, now jumping into science communication. Um, not a lot of people take chances like that to kind of go where their passion takes them. What gave you the courage to... to jump into new careers and explore where your passion wanted to go? Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, it was tough. Um, I wouldn't say I was the most courageous person because it took me time to really be able to navigate all these different areas. It took me a little bit of time to really get a true understanding of myself and be okay with wanting to explore. Um, for me growing up, you know, I come from a traditional Nigerian Cameroonian background. And so my parents' focus was go to school, get your education. That was all that mattered, right? And so my focus was, okay, I have to go, I have to do well in, in high school, then I have to get into college, I have to get a good degree and then start working. And that was all my mind was focused on. Um, but alongside that path, I had my love for music, I had my love for entertainment, all these different things. Uh, but I was so forward focused because I was like, this is the American dream. This is the path that you have to go on. And so I just honed in on education and I went to school and I was an engineer, but I had all this different love for all these different things. And I was doing it mostly on the side. I was doing it mostly as just a hobby, right? Um, and for me, 
they really hit a point when I was working in my engineering job. I remember I went through this wave where I was just starting to feel depressed because I was doing all these different things that I loved outside of engineering that I really wanted to do every single minute of every single day. I remember being in the office, just thinking about music, just thinking about other things that I wanted to explore, thinking about entertainment, all these different things that I wanted to do. And I felt boxed in. I felt that I couldn't really uh, you know, let my wings out and fly and just really be able to embrace all these different things that I loved. And so it took a long time for me to really get my foothold and really get an understanding of myself and be okay with being you know, multi-talented, having an interest in all these different things. And so for me, that, that courage took some time and it really took me kind of feeling like I almost hit rock bottom to really find, in my, uh, find a way to be able to dig out of that. And so once I was in that position, I knew that I didn't want this to be the rest of my life, that I didn't want to feel depressed or feel, uh, feel like myself saying what if for the rest of my life. I just made that leap and I literally put in my resignation and hopped in my car, drove out to LA without necessarily a plan. I just knew that I wanted to explore and I wanted to take things to new heights. And since then, since I made that first leap, everything else has been super easy. It's been easy for me to be okay with myself and uh, in expressing myself in music, expressing myself in front of camera, all these different things have just been for me taking that risk. And so now I know that if I take a risk, I'm always gonna find a way to land on my feet. And knowing that has really helped me be more uh, courageous in the different things that I do in even my explorations that I do now on my hip hop science platform. All right. Awesome. So growing up, I was inspired by Jacques Cousteau, by David Attenborough, following their adventures, learned so much about the natural world. Who yes. as a scientist or explorer inspires or inspired you? Oh, man, this uh, this may be cliche, but I was always a big Bill Nye fan, <laughs> like pretty much every other like geek nerd on Earth. Um, but I was also also a huge uh, Steve Irwin fan. And I remember watching a ton of Steve Irwin. And I was like, I will never put my, my, my hands on an alligator or anything like that willingly. But the fact that somebody has that courage to be able to do that and be able to communicate how that feels to us, to me, was just super inspiring. And so I was like, I literally binge watched everything on Animal Planet, everything Discovery, everything that he touched that had anything to do with exploring the world and exploring biology and wildlife that really helped shape my understanding and really kind of helped build my curiosity into the world around me. So I would say Steve Irwin and Bill and I were definitely two main inspirations of mine. All right. Awesome. Two awesome choices. And I mean, every kid grows up watching Bill Nye. I think there's VHS copies in every school. Yes. Of, of <laughs> I think they moved to DVD now. Yeah. And, it's funny. Know, I actually have VHSs of me back in middle school. We asked that we had like a school science show and I actually did science experiments on the show. It's a segment in the show. And it was to help educate like elementary school kids. They would be able to call in and ask questions on their math homework. And I had my own little science segment and that was all spearheaded by watching Bill and I. I was like, oh, I can do this. And so I used to watch his experiments and then try to redo them myself. And then I broadcasted it on live TV in middle school on my own little science show. So that was a really cool inspiration from Bill and I. All right, that's awesome. So cool. All right, Maynard, final question for today. Advice for the young scientist, explorer, conservationist, adventurer who might be tuning in. Yes, um, I would say my biggest advice is what I preached uh, on my presentation is that stay curious. Be okay with being curious. Navigate the world around you. Ask questions. Be involved. Um, I'm going to be going on, well, hopefully if everything works out with uh, this uh, uh, pandemic situation, but I'm scheduled to go on a fellowship uh, with Ocean Exploration Trust, where we're going to go do some deep sea exploration on the Nautilus live vessel. And that started by me just wanting to do something like that seemed outlandish and that just seemed unexpected. And I heard about the fellowship um, through Instagram and it sounded amazing. I saw pictures um, and it tapped right back into my early love of wanting to be a Nat Geo explorer. And, and they wanted uh, people that were in the science world as science communicators. And like I said, I don't consider myself an expert but I wanted to know more. I wanted to have a better understanding. And so I just applied for it. I didn't, I honestly didn't think, think that I would get it, but I was like, hey, I think I have a cool platform. I think my curiosity can drive me to different levels. Let me see if this will work. And I just did it. And now I am an Ocean Exploration Trust Fellow. And so don't be confident in just exploring. If you, even if, if you don't know, you don't know where it's gonna take you, or if you assume that you're gonna get told no, 
do it anyway. You know, the worst that somebody can tell you is no. And then you just try again and you just keep trying to knock that door down. So stay curious and keep asking questions and it's going to elevate you to levels that you never thought possible. All right. I love it. Maynard, thank you so much uh, for today. What a great presentation and a great message. Uh, super stoked to have you joining in. We'll definitely tap you on the shoulder again for a future event. And yes. uh, yeah, that stay curious message is, is the perfect message for anybody tuning in. Uh, thank you to everybody who did tune in and send in some questions. And we'll see you again tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific for another SciComm story time. Thanks, awesome. everyone. Thank you. Bye.